Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the animator for the player in a 2D game in Unity. In the previous video, I added some animations for walking and jumping and idle for the player. However, at the moment, uh, I haven't specified when each of those animations should play. So if I run the game, we can see that the default animation at the moment is walking even when the player is idle and even when the player is jumping, it's just always playing the walking animation. And the reason for that is because if we go into the animator, um, that's currently just set as the default animation. To access the animator, um, if you don't already have it open, click on window and animation, and then click on animator. And that panel should show up and you just need to make sure that you've also got the player selected because that's what we've added the animations to. So at the moment, the, the default animation is the player walk animation for walking. So what I'm gonna do is now just set the idle animation as the default. So I'm gonna right click on that and choose set as layer default state. So now if I run the game, we should be able to see that um, as soon as the game loads, the first animation that will be playing is the idle animation, which it is, but now, because I haven't set up any transitions or specified when the other animation should occur, at the moment, now the idle animation is just the animation for all types of movement. So we'll need to set up some transitions between each of these animations. So when uh, it should transi transition from idle to walking or from walking to jumping or back to idle. Okay, and to do that, we're gonna need to add some parameters. So I'm gonna click on parameters here and then you can click on the plus button to specify some new parameters. There's gonna be two parameters. One is a float, and that's going to be called speed. And the other one is going to be a boolean or bool, and I'm going to call that on ground. Now, the reason why I need to add parameters is because in the code, um, we're, we're going to find out what the velocity is of the player, so whether the player is moving or not, and um, we're also gonna find out whether the player is touching the ground or not. And we've already got some variables in the code, the player controller script, which is attached to the player. Um, we've already got some variables in here that can tell us what's going on and can talk to the animator and pass that information through and use that to determine which animation should play. So there's a variable here called is touching ground, uh, which is either true or false, depending on whether the player is touching the ground. So we added some code, which um, you can go back to uh, one of the previous videos to look at if uh, you're not sure how to do that, but added some code to check whether the player is touching the ground. And um, we can also get the velocity of the player to um, work out whether the player is moving or not. So we can get all of that information from the script and we can pass it through to these parameters in the animator, which will then be used to uh, determine when each animation should play. So now what I'm gonna do is set up those transitions from each animation. All right, so we'll start with the idle animation. And by the way, you can move around here by holding down Option or Alt on the keyboard and clicking and dragging to move around and you can zoom in and out if you need to by scrolling uh, with the mouse. I'm gonna set up the first transition will be from idle animation to walking animation. So I'm gonna specify, specify when the walking animation should play. So I right click on player idle, click on make transition, and then I'm gonna click on player walk. All right, if I click on that transition there, that path going from idle to walk animation, what I can do is over here, in the inspector panel, add a new condition. So I'm gonna click plus, and the condition here is that the player's speed will need to be greater than 0.1 in order to transition from the idle animation to the walking animation. And the reason why I've said that the speed should be greater than uh, 0.1 instead of just zero is because sometimes, particularly if in your scene, you might have a platform that's maybe on a bit of a slope or the ground is a bit uh, has a bit of a slope, um, then even, when the player is idle, uh, there may actually be some movement occurring there, like really fine, uh, slow movement that you might not notice, um, but that might be enough to trigger the walking animation. So to prevent that from happening, I'm gonna just say speed should be greater than 0 
Now what I'm gonna do is specify the transition from walking to the idle animation. So I'm gonna click on player walk, right click and click on make transition. And now I'm gonna click on player idle. So now you can see there's another path going back from walk to idle. So there's a transition there. This time I'll add another condition, uh, but th now the speed needs to be less than 0 0.1 in order for the walking animation to transition to the idle animation. Okay, um, so now I'll go from, I'll add a transition from idle to player jump. So right click on player idle, select make transition and click on player jump. All right, I'll select that one, add a condition. And this time the condition is that on ground should be false. Okay. so. Uh, in order for the jumping animation to play, uh, the player should be off the ground. So on ground should be false. Now I'm gonna go in the other direction. So I'll right click on player jump, make transition and select player idle. And for that transition that I've just added, I'm gonna add a condition and this time on ground should be true. Okay, so for the player jump animation to stop and the player idle animation to start, uh, the player should no longer um, be in the air and they should be on the ground or touching the ground. All right, um, one more transition I'm going to add is from walking to jumping. So I'll right click on player walk, make transition and then select player jump. And I'm gonna select that new transition and add a condition and this time on ground should be false. Okay, so regardless of whether I am, uh, or the player is idle or walking, uh, it'll be able to transition to the jumping animation. Um, so as soon as the on ground parameter is false, the player jump animation should start playing. Okay, I don't actually need to add another transition from the jumping animation back to the walking animation because for the jumping animation, I have a transition to idle animation when on ground is true. Uh, and then there's a transition to from idle to walking when speed is greater than 0 0.1. So basically I don't really need to add another transition for jumping to walking because as soon as I land on the ground, it's gonna go from the idle animation and to the walking animation if I'm walking. Uh, so that'll happen really quickly. There's no need to add another transition there. All right, um, one last thing I need to do is just change um, a setting for these transitions. So I need to uh, change them one by one. So I'm gonna start with this transition here and I'm going to deselect has exit time. So I'm gonna make sure that that box is not checked. And I need to do that for each of these transitions, make sure that has exit time is not selected. And that's it for the animator. All right, so we can save the game. And the next step is uh, to write some code, which will basically talk to the animator and pass through information like the speed of the player and whether the player is touching the ground or not so that each of these transitions can occur. So we'll look at how to do that in the next video. That's it for this video though. Thank you for watching.